So we're on a series that this is, this is part eight. Golly, it's just like the uh, last series. It just seems like there was just so much stuff. You can't get it all out in one week. And I don't want to hold you guys captive till two o'clock in the afternoon. So you just kind of have to do it a little bit at a time and by stages. But we're on a series called Stop the Madness. What does stop the madness mean? Get a little closer to you. In our life, we have relationships, and usually we're trying, for the most part, we don't identify who's coming in our life or who's coming out of our life, and a lot of times we misappropriate or we put in the wrong category the wrong people, and we wonder why that it, it doesn't work. But if you don't know the purpose of a thing, you can misuse it or abuse it. And so it stopped the madness uh, title because it's like we try to, we, somebody comes in our life as a square peg and we're trying to beat them in a round hole and it just never seems to fit. And we get frustrated and the end result is usually pain, heartache, frustration. And, 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 and listen, that's going to happen every time. If you've got people uh, misappropriated in the wrong category, that is an inevitable. It's going to happen. I don't know what degree or what time frame, but to a certain degree and to, and to a time frame, that will happen. Amen? And we uh, started uh, talking about how God uh, put things into, into different places and categories and put boundaries around everything. That when He created this world, He said, Firmament, you go here. Water, you go over here. Land, you go over here. Because the only way to bring order to chaos is by separation. So you have to separate things in its right category and its right boundary. Then we moved on and got more specific uh, about the different categories of relationships. What's a stranger? What's an acquaintance? What's a colleague? What about a pal? How about your family? Where do they fit in? What about a friend? And what about a covenant partner or a mentor? And we discussed that into some great detail. And if you've missed it, you can always go back and watch it. Amen. If you got internet, we don't charge you a thing to go back and watch it. It's for free. And then we started talking about the different types of people in our lives. Uh, the helpers. Who are our helpers? And uh, who was, who's the predators? What's a predator? What do they look like? And then about toxic relationships. Boy, that was good that day. And so we got into toxic relationships. And then we started talking last week about the three categories of relationships. The first one that we talked about was short-term relationships. That most relationships, most, not all, but most relationships are our life are really short-term relationships. And that we don't need to demonize them as they leave. And we need to bless them as they go, just like we bless them when they came. That they're in our life for a certain season, for a certain purpose. And then it's time for them to go. Bear, bear witness with it that when you were in elementary school, you had a different set of friends in high school. When you got in college, you had a completely different set of friends. And then when you got out into the workplace, you had a, a different set of friends. And then later on in life, you look around and you, you ain't running with who you used to. That everything is seasonal. And, that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't demonize yourself and don't demonize anybody else. Because it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a bad thing, and they're not bad people. Amen. And it doesn't go as a reproach on your ability to handle a relationship. And we talked about the three, uh, as, as short-term relationships come in, we talked about that, identifying that those that are for what you're for, you hang around. All this is commonality, but you'll have a set of people that you'll hang around because they're for what you're for. If you like monster trucks... They always at the events, always at the places where you can get the latest uh, scoop on it. I'm just giving ideas out, y'all. Come on. And then there's those that are against what you're against. Maybe you're extremely pro-life and you want to combat the, the idea of abortions. And so you're always at the abortion clinics or rallies or whatever. Why? And, and, and you have a commonality there because why? Because they're against, uh, you're against what they're against. And then there's those that are there just for you. Amen? So what we're going to do today is we're going to get into long-term relationships. Are you ready? Amen. Well, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this series. And thank you for your Holy Spirit falling afresh upon us again this morning. We thank you for the salvation that we received this morning. We thank you next week for the baptisms that are going to take place. 
Let my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer. Holy Spirit, have your will and have your way in this place. Let understanding and clarity come in all that we say or do. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Redemption Mobile said, Amen. Amen. All right, long-term relationships. You can start turning to Mark chapter 10. We will get there in a minute. Mark chapter 10. New ground, here we go. You ready? Better put your seatbelt on. We had such a powerful time last week that the message wasn't very long, so guess what? I'm going to get it out today. Amen. I got it out. I'm going to get it out today. So long-term relationships. Listen, this is a much smaller group than the short term. Because God gives, God gives you to go the distance. This is a smaller group that God gives you to go the distance. Okay, so we're talking about long-term. Long-term relationships have to be, listen, they have to be cultivated. Let's establish that right out of the gate. These have to be cultivated. Cultivate means to produce, to develop, or improve growth, listen, by preparation, work, and training. You have to, you have to put time, energy, development to sustain a long-term relationship. We have, listen... They have cost and reward. For a long-term relationship, it has cost. <laughs> Amen. Is this Redemption Mobile? Y'all with me out there today? <clears throat> I can literally say it now. I'm about to preach the beast paint off the walls. Amen. So you're going to have to hang on. It's going to get cranked up here in a minute, but you've got to help me. There is cost. It costs to have a long-term relationship. But there's also a reward to having a long-term relationship. There is no relationship without a price tag. I'm going to say that again. There is no relationship without a price tag. Something is going to cost. It, it's always inconvenient. It's, it's, it's something, well, not always. But you're going to find it in long-term relationships. There's going to be lots of inconveniences. Because usually when they, when they need help or you need to assist in something, it's not, sometimes it's just not the appropriate time. Amen. amen. Thank you for that one amen. I'll take it. See, you will have to invest a certain level of sacrifice if you're going to have a relationship. Amen. It's a requirement. It's not optional. If you want to have the long-term relationship, it's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some energy. It's going to cost you in life. Amen. I'm preaching better than you're listening this morning. So having a relationship will require times, listen, of drama. Amen. It's going to, it's going to have... Uh, you're going to have time of giving up conveniences? Well, I'm all settled in. I don't want to get, it's cold out there. I don't want to get out and help them. Golly, they know how to change a tire on their own. Why do they need my help for on that? It's 32 degrees outside. It's Mobile, Alabama. 32 in Mobile, I don't know. It's going to require... By going out of your way. Listen, because, listen, that relationship is that important to you. So not only are you showing them your heart, but your heart's revealing to you also. Because you know that we've already been over this. There's different categories and there's different levels and stages. Not everybody should get into your most inner, inner place. Like we said, Jesus had the multitudes, he had the 70, then he had the 12, then he had the three, and only one was with him at the cross. And usually these uh, times where it's inconvenient, and, and the times when you don't want to get out, you don't want to do the good, uh, do some, something good because you're just tired, you're worn down, 
Or maybe, maybe you're helping a friend out monetarily a little bit, but there's not much to ching in your wallet right now either. Amen, I'm preaching. And those times are going to define a lot of stuff. So you might fake it for a while. Uh, see, you can fake your personality. You can get away with faking that personality, but your character will eventually come through. And it's times like that where lines are drawn and whether you know it or not, there's, different, there's categories and boundaries put in place. In other words, how come I, I've been over backwards for you last month and, and now all of a sudden it's like I got a little something, something here and, and, and all of a sudden you can't make it. You, you have plans, things that come up, uh, you're not able to. Wait a minute now. It's times like that you need to pay attention to stuff. That doesn't mean that they're evil or bad. And it doesn't mean that you're requiring more of, 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 than, than what they're willing to give. But what it does mean is that you know the value of that relationship now. You're seeing just what kind of... Listen, you're seeing what kind of price tag they're putting on you. And you're also seeing the kind of price tag you're putting on others. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. So the reason some of us are, I'm going to just come on up in your kitchen. I'm going to sit down and drink some iced tea. Here it comes. The reason some of us are so lonely is that we're not willing to pay the price to have that relationship. Yeah. It's a cost reward. There are rewards. But there's also a recost. And a lot of times loneliness just comes from the pure fact that you haven't built your character up and you're not mature enough yet to be able to sustain a long-term relationship because you like to take, but you don't like to give. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you know, you can break every devil you want to. You can switch your clicks weekly if you want to. Change here and there, but you know what? You're never going to have nobody stick with you because you're never willing to pay the price. And so you're going to stay lonely. Pastor, pray for me. No, nah, change attitude. Mm. So you're not going to get an all rewards, no cost Long-term relationship. You might have that on short terms a little bit. And remember when we went into the different categories and we went also into the predators and stuff like that? So this, you see, you got to balance out every series, I mean, every message that I have with the ones before it, okay? And if something's like, oh, I don't know about that, well, just go back and listen to the other ones. It'll make sense to you, okay? But that's on you. I ain't preaching it again because I already preached it. And I've provided the resources, praise God, for you to go back and watch it again. See, God says in a real relationship, the rewards should always outweigh the cost. You're in Mark chapter 10, right? Yes. Amen. Well, I'm in Mark 6. I need to flip over a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mark chapter 10. And if, if you've got a religious mindset this morning, what I'm about ready to read is going to make you itch. You, you're going to get real uncomfortable real quick, okay? But I'm going to read the red letters here, and I'm going to read what Jesus said about the whole situation. So here we go. Mark chapter 10, we're going to start with verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. You realize that Jesus didn't call anybody that was just hanging around and didn't have nothing to do. Can I break it down into modern terms for us? Jesus didn't, okay, I'm going to break it down in 2017. Jesus didn't call anybody that's sitting at home and waiting for the first of the month for that check to come in the mailbox. <laughs> Why? Because somebody like that wouldn't have nothing really to lose. Jesus called businessmen and people that were prominent in their society and what they did. In other words... They had a good business that was going on. They didn't call somebody who just, well, you know, I, this Jesus guy, that sure beats hanging around the house all day eating Cheetos and watching Jerry Springer or something. Yeah, I think I'll go follow him. 
No, he called somebody that in order to follow them, in order to follow him, they had to look behind, and there's a cost. I spent, matter of fact, my, my great-grandfather was in this business. It got passed to, to my grandfather, and, and he had this business. And then my father taught me everything from the time I was a, using a southern language here for all those who are not from the south, just expressing. Uh, since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, he's been teaching me this business. And it's a profitable business, and we've been able to sustain our family for all these generations in this business. We fishermen, and that's what we do. And, and I've put a lot of time into it and, and a lot of training in my family history and everything. And, and, and I've got to give that up. There's no such thing as a no-cost relationship. And Peter says, we've left all. How many of us have really left all? I've come close to it, amen. Born and raised in the mountains of North Carolina for over 30 years. That was my home. Never went any, never lived anywhere else. And God said, like to Abraham, I'll call you to a land I'll show you. I ain't never, I, I, even somebody asked me one time, you're moving where? I said, Alabama. They go, why is it Alabama? <laughs> I couldn't answer them at that time. But now I can say, all y'all. Left. And I'm not trying to say this about me. So I'm not putting myself on a pedestal. I just, you know, my life is the only example of life God. I ain't got your life. I got my life. Okay. I've been with me my whole life. And I had to leave house. Literally. We left our home. We left our job. We left our family. And we left our friends. But let's read here. Let's read some things, okay? Let's finish on here. Long-term relationships going to cost you. And Jesus answered and said, so who's talking here? Jesus. Do you have red letters in your Bible right afterwards? Yes. Oh, cry, here we go. Verily or truly I say unto you, he's talking to you too. There is no man, and that means mankind, okay? It's not gender specific here. There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake. For whose sake? We're not talking about you just getting buck wild and going off and deciding that, you know, you've hit your midlife crisis and I think I want to move, change jobs and get a Corvette. I don't think, well, you know, I've been married for 15 years. I've had three kids. I, wanna, I want me a dangerous man now. I want an adventurous man now. I want some change in my life. We're not talking about that. We're talking about leaving off for the sake of following him. Because all he did was tap you on the shoulder and say, will you get in the ring? Will you, will you, will you, will you, use the good, will you, will you fight? Will you fight this good fight of faith for the kingdom? Will you join in the battle? Whew. Amen. Many are called, but few are what? Mm. I'm glad you guys knew that. I say it all the time that I refuse to pastor a dumb and a dead church. Amen. Amen. So he said, for my sake and the, the gospel. Another, another, what, what's he saying? He said, will you do it for me and for my cause? Notice that he started with him first. Because a lot of times we can get caught up, especially if you're a mover and shaker, you can get caught up in the vision and you can get caught up in the cause. In other words, Jesus has been selling this vision for many years now. Amen. I'm sure he had his vision statement said every day just like we do out here. Amen. Even though they didn't understand a lot of it, they didn't understand this dead and resurrected thing. But they knew that he was a, a, a king that had a kingdom. And so while he first off, is, he said about him, he didn't say about the vision. Come on, let's go because of the sake of the vision, the sake of the work. He said, first, will you do it just for me? Will you do it just for me? And then if we can get past that, then I'll, let me show you what it's all about. Let me show you why we're doing what we're doing. Verse 30. Let me read the 29 again so I can get it in context. 
Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but shall receive... What does yours say after that? Say it louder. Say it one more time. Who said that? Jesus. That shall not receive a hundredfold... Now in this time, not in the sweet by and by. Yes, there's the scripture that have your rewards up in heaven where moth, can't, moth and rust can't get to it. But he's also saying, come on now, you can't leave one out and the other. That's rightly dividing the word. Whether you like it, whether you don't, whether you've heard it, whether you don't, whether it lines up with you. Let me tell you, what you believe about the truth won't change truth. It's always going to read this way. That you'll receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, plural. Remember, he's the prize. It's not stuff. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, what will happen? All these things will be... And he's saying, you follow me and you leave all to follow me. I'll make sure that even in this lifetime, houses... As Jesus said to a lot of people, be it, be it unto you according to your faith. I just read it. You did too. It's according to your faith. Not, it's not, faith is not according to his ability. See, sometimes we think, well, we'll receive this. It's not according to his ability. It's according to your faith. He's already said yes. Can you believe him? Can you trust him? Oh, I'm get off of that. Lord Jesus, I'll get in that direction and never get back. But in this time, houses, brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, look, with persecution. See, you, you driving around in the 1997 rust bucket, when you pull up, you pull up in the bins, all of a sudden now people start talking, don't they? Huh? Your, your life was a wreck, but now you on top because Jesus walked on the water. He walked on the water just to show you that he can walk on top of whatever, you, whatever you're drowning in. And now you decided to get out of the boat and walk on the water with him. People be like, wow. But then after that, it's coming. You're going to have persecution. You're going to have haters. But if you want what I got, all you got to do is do what I did. Amen. Because the gospel is for everybody. It's not for a select few. It's for all who will believe. It's a whosoever. Come on, bro. And by the way, gospel does mean good news. Amen. Amen. With persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Amen. Jesus is saying, Peter... I don't care what you have walked away from. I'll give you back more than what you sacrificed. There is a cost, but there is a reward. Amen. See, if you're in a season of sacrifice for God, listen, go ahead and multiply it. See, that's why I can get excited about everything from ground up here. We've not got all the bells and whistles yet. I wish we had three or four, and we're going to three or four children's rooms for different age groups. I wish we, this whole place was painted and carpeted already. I, I, yeah, okay. We've not got all the bells and whistles. But we got the Holy Ghost in here and people getting born again, saved, delivered, getting raised up and delivered, going out and doing kingdom business. Amen. That's what matters. And it's a time of sacrifice. There's a cost right now. I like to put it this way. Remember, Kennedy said, ask not what you can do. Uh, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. It's like church has gotten to the point now it's so seeker friendly. I want to flip that around and I, and, and, and I want to go ahead and say, ask not what your God can do for you, but ask what you can do for your God. Amen. Well, let's bring it down here. Don't, don't ask what your church can, can do for you. Come on. Come on. Ask what you can do for your church. Putting that sweat equity into it. Putting your time and talents. Giving out a hot dog to somebody. 
giving them a hug and a smile, handing a card out to somebody so they can come into an environment to experience Holy Spirit and they can hear the life-giving Word of God and it can change their lives forever and their families' lives forever and they could be a start of a whole different generation to come. Yes, sir. Amen. But there's a cost on the front end. Praise God, we do have cushy chairs though. Amen. <laughs> but how long was it when we didn't have? Do you guys remember sitting in steel chairs? I love your preaching, Pastor, but we have been sitting down here about, you know, when it, 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 I don't want to say, but it's like, I get it, I get it, I get it. We got cushy chairs now, amen? Amen. And we do want to do things excellent. We do want to do things to, to a, and we, listen, we want, we're going to have some of these things, but not at the price tag of having the Holy Spirit to move with power. Not at the price tag of having people come and in, 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 be entertained. Not at the price tag that... that see, see, we've had a lot... I'm going to say this too. We've had a lot of kids give their life to the Lord here. Now, we, we, might, we might not have all the little bells and whistles, all the, all, the, all the games and all the little tweaky things, but I tell you what, your kids are going to learn about the Word of God when they go into that classroom. And, and you know why? Because you know what? If, 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 if they don't learn it from a church, they're going to learn stuff from the world. Amen. They're going to learn from somebody. You better tell them God's flip on it. Because the world's going to tell it their interpretation of things. Amen. That was good right there. And so you might as well multiply it. Because God said, God said, whatever you sacrifice to follow him, he'll reward it a hundredfold back to you. This is the goodness of God. I'm just giving my life as an illustration, okay? Left where we were at. Once again, you heard me say it. 30 years, lived in the same place. Family, friends, everything. Didn't know anything else. Lived in a place where I had to pay a mortgage. I don't have a mortgage no more. Lived in a place where we just drove whatever we could to get by. Amen. <laughs> we got reliable vehicles now, amen. amen. Lived in a place where we had friends that, like I said last week, that usually was because we had something in common, whether it's because we worked together or whether we had the same interest or we were against it. But now I got a whole family of friends that love me just because of me. I remember having to get up at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning to make it in work at 6. And also when we worked overtime, because first shift always come in early on overtime. Second shift stayed late because the third shift was just a graveyard, okay? And so I remember plenty of mornings. I mean, it reminded me uh, yesterday when we had that snow. I remember specifically uh, <clears throat> when we would work overtime, we would have to be at work at 4 a.m., and so many times I would wake up at 2.30 or 3 o'clock because it's snowing in the mountains of North Carolina. And I'd have to get up at 2.30 or 3 a.m. in the morning and shovel off the snow all off my vehicle, try to get it warm and take a shovel and try to make some... I had to do all of that. I can remember many, many times of doing that. Amen. Now if I'm waking up at 3 a.m. it's because the Holy Ghost said that he's giving me a word for something. Or one of, you guys, one of you guys ain't in some good shape, and I pray that that don't happen. But, Amen. Do you see? Do you see how he can bless you? I mean, this is just the beginning. I left how many friends back home? Look how many more friends I got now. Amen. And the hundreds that are coming. Hey, you ain't saying nothing. Amen. Amen. That's my testimony. I can shout about it. Amen. I know where I come from, the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Poverty mindsets and everything else like a third world country in some of the places. They always, you know, giving this and giving that at the holiday seasons for those that are underprivileged. But you know what? That's like year round where I was born and raised. Yes. Better get the wood in in the summer. Didn't get to enjoy my summer as a kid because I had to cut wood to make sure that it was in the fireplace so I could heat my home and not die in the winter. Amen. Ah, you don't know what I'm yep. talking about. Amen. That's all right. I'm going on with it. 
You see, if you're in a relationship that's constantly costing you, but it's never rewarding you, then you'll not be able to sustain it. You, I don't care how much you care for them. I don't care how much, you know, smiles and good times that you've had and this and that and the other. It does not matter. Listen, if you are giving all and you're getting nothing back in return, you, you, I don't care how big your heart is for it, you cannot sustain it. You can't sustain it. Amen. If you want all rewards and no cost, you do not want a friendship or a relationship. Here's what you want. You want codependency. You want to be a victim. You want somebody that you can prop up your life against because you don't have one of your own or you hate yours. It's going to cost. I've seen too many people, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a relationship or marriage or whatever, I've seen it too many times where one person is giving out 100% and the other one maybe 10, 20 from time to time and they have their blurts and moments of, you know, and it's just sputters. Well, that will sputter to an end eventually because you can't sustain it. It will leave you dry. It will leave you frustrated. It will leave you cold. All of a sudden, the people that aren't in your life that do love you, they're not taking advantage of you, all of a sudden you distance yourself from them a little bit. Because you're drained. You've had to literally, literally had life sucked out of you. Amen. I received that. Here's a powerful and sobering truth. <clears throat> That wasn't enough a shock effect. You can try this one on you. If someone wants to go, you can't make them stay. I don't care how much you bawl. I don't care how much you squall. The power of their will will override your prayer. It'll override your fasting. And it will override your praise. I know I experienced it before. I remember when my fiancé left, left me and kicked me to the curb, and I wasn't eating for the longest time. Ended the depression. Went to a bottle. Feeling pretty low. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Hey, man, I got a pass, too. That's the power of the gospel. That's why he'll put people like me in this kind of position. Hey, man, to show what he can do. If you're already fixed up and tidied up. But he likes to take the ragtag people of the world like me and raise them up. Amen. Glory. Because he, he's got to get the glory for it because I ain't got no resume. Amen. Where was I even at? That's right. You can't, you can't override somebody's free will. You can't with your prayer fasting and your praise. And when she decided to go bye-bye, that was it. Does that mean that God didn't hear my prayer? Of course He heard it. But He can't go and override her free will. Amen. Amen. Was I heartbroken? Yes. Did He want to come for me? Yes. Did I run to Him 100%? No. So I stayed broke for a while. And it's my own fault. Remember, I was lonely. Why? Because I didn't want to pay in a cost on that relationship. Amen. My heart's broke, Lord, but I ain't cracked your word open in a few weeks, and I hadn't been to church in a few months, but I'm hurting and broke, and where are you at, God? I'm the same place where you left me a long time ago. I'm just waiting for you to come walk around. I ain't went nowhere. Where'd you go? Hey, man. I tried to tell you a long time ago, but you wouldn't listen. Now I... And he will. He'll pull you out of that hole. But you got to quit digging it. Look. These things work wonders in your fellowship time with God. Your prayer, your fasting, your praise. They work wonders with you and His relationship, fellowshipping with God. But they do not work one bit with your persuading the hearts of other people. Amen. See, I'm not going to spend my life begging you to love me. I should have got a bigger amen than that. 
See, when the prodigal son left, he weighed cost-reward. Luke 15. I've got this week, and I've got one more week, so I have to get through some of this. So just follow along. I think maybe about 15 more minutes. Luke 15. That's the prodigal stone, starting with verse, verse 11. Amen? So highlight that. For time's sake, I'm not going to be able to read all of that, but I want you to know where the address is on everything that we're talking about, okay? Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11. Look, the prodigal thought the cost of submission. Most of us are familiar with this story, so I'm going to go on with it. He thought the cost of submission wasn't worth staying. It would cost more than he wanted to pay. Why well, I got to hang around here? Do what you tell me to do. When you tell me to do it. How you tell me to do it. I got stuff coming to me. Well, I want it. Give it to me. Let me go out so I don't have to be under submission no more. I want to go out and do my own thing. Does that sound familiar? You know it does because that's you too. Amen. Maybe not now. If it is now, we can change that too at the end of service. See, isn't it interesting that the choices we deem as expensive aren't nearly the cost of the alternative choices? We think the cost of being under the Father's house and under submission to Him is a cost. And we don't realize the alternative choices of not being under. And those over there being out of the house is a whole lot more expensive price to pay. Lord Jesus, we're going to get into that. See, he max maximized the cost of and minimized the reward. He thought there would be a greater reward if he left the house. And I've not heard this said a whole lot too, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. The father never chased him because he knew that it was a long-term relationship and that also he can't make him stay. If you want to leave, he'll let you leave. And if you want to truck yourself on down the road over the hill and far away, he'll let you go. He's not going to be giving out SOSs and texts and everything else like that. If you want to go, he's going to let you go. And he knows that even he himself can't stop you if you want to go. But he also knows that if you're his child, amen, it's a long-term relationship. Let's talk about it. The father also knew that if his son wouldn't listen to him, that he would listen to a pig. Here we go. I'm wound up now. You see, it's amazing how many people won't listen to a father. They won't listen to a mother. They won't listen to a best friend and they won't listen to a pastor, but they'll listen to a pig. See, there are some that the only language, language that they understand is the language of pain. You won't listen to nobody. You won't listen to godly counsel. You won't listen. You're not hearing what you want to hear. So you're going to any source that will tell you what you want to hear. And you won't listen to it. You keep going down that path and you will find yourself in a pig pen. And you won't listen to everybody else. But you know what you will listen to? You will listen to pain. And if someone has left your life that God ordained to be there for a long time, just wave goodbye and let them go. Amen. Just let them go. Because see, the father watched for his son's return, knowing that the pig would send him back. See, looking at the pig eye to eye gave him a revelation of the great rewards waiting for him back at his father's house. Oh, you ain't saying nothing. When your begging won't bring them back, your prayer won't bring them back, don't chase them down. Let pain turn them around. Let them look at eyeball to eyeball that pig. Let them listen to the, the language of pain for a while. 
They'll get a real clear retrospect of what reality really is and what their false fantasy notions of what they thought may be is. And now there's a stark contrast. And, they, and the father knew that if he won't listen to me... See, God's first line with you is not pain. It says the word of God is given to us in 2 Timothy. For righteousness, for correction. But if you won't listen to his word, he will allow you to participate in pain. And he doesn't like using it, but he will. <laughs> Amen. Remember this. Is, this is for a Holy Ghost confirmed long-term relationship, not a short-term one. What I'm saying here. If it's short-term, they ain't come back, okay? You could put this in context. We're talking about long-term relationships. See, the pig can do what a thousand of your prayers can't do. Let the pig talk to them. The pigs will bring them back just... Give it some time, the pigs will bring them home. And in this story, all was restored. Well, Pastor, I went through that and everything else, and they still, it's been years, and they still ain't come back. Then it wasn't a long term relationship. Guess what? You missed it on it. It's not the end of the world. God can start afresh. Amen. Hallelujah. The pain that I went through, I'm so glad I went through that pain because I wouldn't have this princess sitting on the front row if I hadn't. Her. Amen. That's right. Y'all know she's the best one in this relationship anyways. Cuter than I am, smarter than I am, sweeter than I am. I married up. I married up. Yes, I did. See? Talking about that hundredfold. See, I got a hundred times. Well, amen. Amen. She's awesome. Where was I? See, I get talking about my bride. Just like Jesus, he gets talking about his bride. It's, amen. Talking about my bride. I got to get my focus back again. I love you, baby. But in this story, all was restored upon arrival with the Father. And that is true with us also. Listen, but not all will be restored upon arrival with others. See, when you go out and do your own thing, your own way, you leave where you're supposed to be, you won't listen to wisdom, and pain has come into your life, you can go back to the Father's house. We're going to talk about that here in a second. You can go back, to, and everything can be restored to you with you and Him. Everything is okay this way. But not this way. It's going to take some time. And this is one of the reasons why I preach as hard as I can, y'all. Because even though you can get it straightened out quick with God, you can't always with man. And it's going to cost a lot and it's going to take a lot of time for a full recovery. That's why I can be so hard and so blunt sometimes. Because I don't want you staring at the pig. I don't want you to make them same bad choices and decisions. I don't want to be trying to counsel with you three or four years and your life is falling apart and you're a wreck. And you're going into something you come out of or you're going into something you've, somewhere you've never been, but it's all bad and there's warning lights and hazards signs everywhere. I don't mind getting in your face a little bit if it prevents you from having to go there and experience that. Amen. So, one more point. Notice that the father ran to his son, and this is the only place I found in Scripture where God ran. And the Father loves you with a love that surpasses knowledge. He delights to see you come home after being far away. But you have no business being in a place you have no business being in and yoked to people that you have no business being yoked to. But check this out. Your homecoming gets him up and running, but there is a clear point not spoken of much here either. Not only did the Father not not run after his son at his departure, but listen. But the father only ran to his beloved when his beloved entered back into his domain, back into his territory. Squall all you want to, sitting beside the pig pen. 
Is this too heavy for y'all? The only time he's going to run back to you is when you run back to him on his turf. You have to come back into his territory. You got to come back into his dominion. Otherwise, you can just keep staring at the pig. Hey, man, I hope somebody's getting something out of this. Amen. So all the Father's provisions, all His protection, and all His peace, listen, they're located in His house. I found I've had this happen in our life and when we went through things all these years, when we were supposed to be yoked under a house, and when we left that to go somewhere else for a while, our protection, our provision, I'm telling you, it's real, y'all. I mean, when we were not... When we were not where we were supposed to be, all the other things just didn't fall into line. Matter of fact, I can remember one time when we decided to give to a certain ministry of our tithes and in a period of our life, and we thought it would be good because what? Because they needed help there. It was a work of God. There was some fruit. But you know what I never did? Lord, is that what we're supposed to do? And then we find out, you know, as we went through the city, no, you're going to have to bring that into the storehouse. That was one of the worst years that we ever had. Our finances went down. Everything was hard. We had arrows shot in our top of our house. We had floods come in our house. I mean, just one thing right after another. We got broken into. I mean, it's almost like what's going on. And God said, I said in my word that I would rebuke the devourer. I would put that hedge of protection around if you do this. Are you doing that? No. It's not that God did anything. He's a good, good God. Look, don't get mad when you're wet if you step out of the umbrella while it's raining. Don't say you don't like your life being so dark if you've walked away from the light. If you're in darkness, it's because you walked away from the light. He ain't sending darkness to you. Trying to get you to come back to the light because when you come back to the light, he'll run towards you. That's right. We put things in perspective, and all of a sudden, it took a little bit of time, but things started working out right. Things started happening right. I got more business at my business. Kimberly got started getting some raises. Da 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 da. On and on and on. Amen. Amen. Y'all looking at me like I got two heads. I'm telling you the truth. So get back to the Father's house where you belong and don't complain about the rain and pain if you're rebelling against His ordinances and refuse to seek shelter in His house. See, it's a body. And He knows that you're not, look, you're not going to get everything you need. I don't care if you are out on your boat fishing for six hours a day talking to God. You are not going to get everything that you need from God, just you and Him. He has purposely put apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers in the church. And he's also given other body members in the church who have gifts and callings. And it's not going to be just you and God. Everything that you need in life is not going to come from just you and God. He is going to give you what you need through others. He meant it to be that way so the body could be connected. Every joint supplies. He set it up that way. You are not going to get everything you need from just yourself. And I felt, like I said, I found out this too. Everything that I need in life is going to come through the place where He sent me. Because if you're going off somewhere else doing something, some, somewhere else doing something else with someone else, eventually there's going to come a time and things just ain't working out like it. Well, what happened? Because God said you're to be here and your blessings are there. They're there through them and with them. I'm going to have them bless you, and you're going to bless them. You've got a part to play here. And you're not going to know the next step of the way until you get back. We experienced this recently when we left. We, before we started this church, we were at a crossroads. I'm just going to go ahead and get personal. And we knew that there was bigger plans, but we didn't have full directions. And the Lord said, you can't keep riding in a vehicle that's not taking you to your destination. There's nothing wrong with the vehicle. And there's nothing wrong with the way they're going. They're doing what I call them to do, the way I call them to do it. But your identity and your purpose is in this direction. You must change vehicles. And just as soon as we hopped into another vehicle and started on that, and it was hard. Because why? Because you're leaving people that are not 
scoundrel heathens and you're looking at people that you love and that love you. But you've got to go over here. And as long as I... You've got to go over there. And as long as I was staying here, I wasn't getting it all. On purpose. It wasn't until we switched cars, I got under another covering. Amen. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Favor. Vision. A stronger anointing. I remember the first time that I come back after Apostle laid his hands on me and the oil pulled over my head. First time I preached, I walked out and that person just goes like, what happened to you? Why? Because it was night and day. And that never would have happened if I'd stayed over here. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I hope this isn't too heavy for you. It matters what you're under. And you don't need to look for a place. You need to look for your place. He'll run to you every time, but only on his estate. And let me stay on topic, but change the direction just a little bit, and then I'm going to let you go. Accepting someone's limitations is another key to long term. Quit trying to change folk that you say you love. We all enter relationships with limitations. Did you know that? Did you know that only Jesus had it all? Amen. So there's just some things that I can't do. I know that for sure, especially around here. I walk in and everybody's like got all these projects going on. I'm just like, can I hand you something? Can I lift something? Well, I mean, you know, it's like, Pastor, just, you know, just pull out that credit card and go get something at Lowe's. Yes, I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So you look, God, you know, love me for what I am, not for what I am not. Amen. Listen, I can bring, I can bring you what I can, but I can't bring you what I don't possess. So understand that in long-term relationships, you have to accept limitations without thinking, listen, without thinking you're going to change it. Don't try to change him. Don't try to change. let God deal with them. But if they won't listen to God, you think they're going to listen to you? That's what I'm saying in these long-term relationships. You got to test this thing out for a while. If they ain't going to listen to God, they ain't going to listen to you. And you know what? You ain't going to change them. Mm. Ain't nobody crying out there on me, are they? Amen. <laughs> All right. So, understand that in long-term relationships, you have to accept limitations without thinking you're going to change it. And sometimes, even your strength can be your weakness. See, I'm a teacher. And I can't help it. It just oozes out of me 24-7. And I can go... I can go all day long giving answers because that's what I do. And I seek solutions, I seek answers, and I like to teach and preach. Now then, I have to be careful because my wife doesn't always want to teach her. It's a strength that may bless your life. I'm glad I went today. Pastor Shore put that in perspective. I understand now. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go back and read them scriptures again and again and again. I never saw that before. That's going to help change my life. And that's awesome. But my wife don't always want a teacher. See, when I hear her talk about a problem, I immediately think, well, I can fix that. Just let me edit here. Let me think about this for a minute. But sometimes she, doesn't, she, wants, she just wants a husband. She don't want a teacher. And if I try to be that teacher when she just wants her husband, all of a sudden I'm, and the peace can go in that situation. I'm rocking the boat. Why? Because she just wants her husband. What's up, bro? You just need to be her husband. Don't try to fix nothing. Don't try to teach her. Just listen. Hug her. Let her say what she's going to say. And fellas, if she wants to say it for 30 minutes, turn the TV off. Get all the distractions away 
and listen to her with your eyes. Amen. Amen. You like this, don't you? I mean, my biggest fan right now is on the front row. Uh, okay, so also, long-term relationships demand, listen, total integrity. I said total integrity. I only have three more sentences and I'm done. And when you go into a relationship with no integrity, you break trust. Not only can you not change them, not only do they have limitations, not only they're going to be whoever they want to be, if they don't want to listen to God, they sure ain't going to listen to you. But there has to be total integrity in the relationship. And when trust is broken, listen, cost goes up and efficiency goes down. i got to say that again. When trust is broken, the cost goes way up, just like insurance. Why was, why is one of the reasons insurance is so high? Because everybody's suing everybody. Because when trust is broken, the cost is going to go up. It's going to cost more to be in that relationship. And you know what? Not only is it going to cost you more, but the efficiency is going to come down. Everybody got that? I'm getting kind of mixed looks here. Amen. I'm sure we're on the same page. I'm passionate. I'm mad at nobody. I'm just passionate about this. So that's, that's the cost of trust being broken. It takes a long time to build that back. Your relationships will always move at the speed of trust. You don't take nothing into another level until you can do it built on trust. Not on time, but on trust. Gosh, I just said something there. You always move your relationship based on trust, not on time. Because if you've not seen what you need to see, I don't care... Well, we've been together for five years, but have you seen what you've needed to see in five years? You, you, you take it further on the, the track of trust, not on the track of time. That's what you put the relationship on. You put it on that track, and you go down that track based on trust. And then whenever they meet that trust, well, then go to the next destination, then go to the next, not on time. Well, we've been together for five years. That doesn't mean anything. Qualify those who are trustworthy. That's my last point. Qualify those that are trustworthy. You need to ask the hard questions. You need to be observant. You need to see what category are these people. Are they long term? Are they short term? Are they meant to be just a pal? Are they meant to be a friend? Are they meant to be a, a future spouse? Uh, is this person, are they a helper coming to my life? Or, or are they a predator? Or is this a, going to be a toxic? You gotta have. You got to put all those together, because if you don't, it's just inevitably going to bring a hurt into your life. As the music plays, stand to your feet. You know, generally we have such a move when we have such a move of God like we have today. That usually we leave in peace, but I don't think. I don't think God's finished yet. Amen. And we ain't got the fancy lights yet, but if you're here today and you know some relationships in your life that you've gotten out of order, or out of category, and you're hearing this for the first time, and I understand you can't digest it all at once. That's what I'm saying. Go back and watch all of this. Take notes. Man, I sometimes listen to uh, my pastor three or four times during the week. He might preach it on Sunday, but I'm listening to it three or four times during the week. Sometimes if I'm going through a situation, I've got a spiritual father who's preached on it. Sometimes I'll listen to that series, I'm, I'm not kidding, 10, 11 times taking notes to try to get everything out of it because my spirit bears witness. That's truth. But then a few days go by and you're like, um, wait a minute, that was... Uh, and you're going to need that stuff.